welcome to MTBS TV. I'm Neil Schneider. Today we are going to start talking about the history of console gaming in stereoscopic 3D. Similar to PC 3D gaming, console has its fair share of controversy as well. And we're going to talk about that at a later time. Now, let's start with something simple enough. How are consoles different from, from PC? Well, first off, consoles are an out-of-the-box experience. You, the idea is you could take a cartridge or take a DV, DVD, put it in that console. You know, you don't even have to think of an operating system. You plug it in, the game works 100% of the time, no matter what you have it connected to. That's the idea of console. Now, something that's very important about console is that it is most likely going to be the gaming solution that you're going to find in the living room. And this is of critical importance to both game developers as well as the display manufacturers, the TV makers, because obviously they want products that are going to work with their televisions and their displays. Now, today we're going to focus on two early stereoscopic 3D console solutions, Sega's Master System and Nintendo's Virtual Boy. Now, now the Sega Master System in itself was not a stereoscopic 3D solution. It was a console that was released in October of 1985. It was moderately successful. It sold all of 13 million units during its run. It did okay. It wasn't phenomenal. But what made this unit special was that one of the peripherals it offered was, were Sega Scope 3D glasses. Now these glasses were released in 1988. They were $50 US. Now $50 went a bit further back in the 80s than it does today, but 50 bucks for the glasses. Check out this ad. See what you think. Now, Sega challenges you to experience Sega Scope 3D. 3D so real, it puts the action right in your face. Not even 3D effects like these can match what you'll see through these amazing Sega Scope 3D glasses. Games and accessories sold separately. And nothing but the experience itself can give you the challenge and excitement of Sega games like Saxon 3D. Coming soon. And Missile Defense 3D. Sega Scope 3D. Only on the Sega system. Sega. The challenge will always be there. Okay, well, the marketing, you know, some would disagree with having things flying out of the screen the way they did. Maybe it was a little too tongue-in-cheek. But any way you look at it, it really does come across as a cool product. Now, I don't know if you could tell, but these glasses are LCD shutter glasses. Back in, back in 88, we're, you know, we're already seeing LCD shutter glasses on the market. And they worked with traditional CRT televisions, not the... LCD HDTVs that we have today. We're talking about those big honking televisions that you know many people still use. Now, uh, the way they did it was they used an interlaced format. So, you know, they they got that 3D experience. The trade-off was they had half the vertical resolution that that is offered today. Now, uh, but on the, on the positive side, it was a full color 3D solution, which in, which in those days was a, was a big deal. Now, how did the product do? Ultimately, it failed. Why did it fail? Well, first and foremost, Sega only supported six games in this in this stereoscopic 3D format. So, uh, you know, when there's not enough content to go around, obviously the product's not going to be very successful. But there was a bigger problem. Uh, it, you know, the, the, the glasses only worked with the original Sega Master System, but the console had gone through follow-up revisions, and with these follow-up revisions, the connector that the glasses needed was no longer there. So suddenly, the, you know, there was no way to hook the glasses up to the console. Now, uh, another problem, let's say in the perfect world that the glasses worked 100% of the time, there was a lot more content to work with, there was a, there was a, a much deeper problem. The games themselves were not immersive in nature. This is the generation where games were flat, two-dimensional characters. There's only so much stereoscopic 3D can, can add if, if the games themselves do not you know, lend themselves to this type of media. So it, it really wasn't going to work out. Now, let's take a look at another company called Nintendo. And before we talk about Nintendo, let me tell you about a gentleman named Gunpai Yokoi. Now, the majority of, uh, of Mr. Yokoi's career was, was at Nintendo, and, and he had a very heroic career. Among other things, he invented the Game Boy, Game & Watch, and he produced the Metroid video game series, which were extremely popular, very well respected. Now, uh, Gunpai Yokoi's final contribution in, to Nintendo was the, Nint was the Nintendo Virtual Boy, which he designed. 
Now, Virtual Boy was released in July 1995. It was a stereoscopic 3D gaming system. I would describe it as a pseudo head-mounted display design. It wasn't something that you would wear on your head. Instead, you would sit at a table, uh, you know, the, the Virtual Boy would be standing on its own legs, and you'd be carefully seated directly in front of it, looking through its viewfinder and playing with the joystick. Check out this commercial, see what you think. It came from the third dimension, with its own brain, its own voice, its own legs. There's only one problem. It needs your eyes. Virtual Boy. See it now in 3D. Now, I think this marketing was completely cool. I mean, see this virtual boy walking around and, you know, it's got everything it needs except your eyes. I mean, I, I just think it's really cool. But what happened? Well, Virtual Boy was a dismal failure. It sold all of 770,000 units, which really was a very modest number of sales. It was just a failure. There's no way to. There's no other way to put it. Uh, it it's unfortunate, but the Virtual, beca virtual Boy became a gaming industry laughing stock, and it only stayed on the market for about six months. Now, why did the product fail so badly? Well, first off, it was an uncomfortable experience. I mean, the idea of sitting at a table in this fixed position, it wasn't going to work. The display itself was, was not only was it monochrome, it was red monochrome. So you know, a red display, it, ugh, it just wasn't going to work. And the, the stereoscopic 3D gaming, not very comfortable. But there were bigger causes for, for this failure. Uh, Nintendo rushed Virtual Boy to market because they wanted to put their resources in, into the N64. Gunpai Yokoi never intended for this product to be released in its, in its current state. And a huge problem, even today, you know, when it comes to marketing stereoscopic 3D games or movies, you really have to see it firsthand to appreciate it. So sure, these commercials were, you know, were successful. People were going to the store to check out this virtual boy, but what they were finding were the displays were broken, the virtual, you know, the, the units weren't working. So ultimately, people couldn't try the product, enjoy the product, and and and, all, and you know, obviously the product wasn't sold. So it's a lot of lot of problems. So sadly, once a hero of Nintendo, this failure was directly pinned on Gunpai Yokoi and, and the corporate you know, nature of it, he really had to move on from Nintendo. It was very sad. And, and to make matters that much worse, uh, you know, he, he, he died in a car accident in October of 97, and it really was a devastating loss to the gaming industry. Now, what are the ramifications of all this? Well, these were the industry pioneers. When it comes to stereoscopic 3D gaming on console, they deserve the credit that they have. They were the pioneers. Unfortunately, the nature of being a pioneer is, is more often than not, you do get the arrow in the back. Um, and the failures had nothing to do with the 3D technology. It was a failure that, A, the games weren't ready for 3D, and the 3D, the means of delivering 3D you know, to the games, wasn't ready yet. The two sides hadn't evolved enough to make stereoscopic 3D gaming successful on console. So when people are complaining about, even today, about cardboard cutout games, with, you know, with, you know like, like playing cards and video games, what they're really talking about are, are video games and stereoscopic 3D from that generation, not the current generation of, of wonderful stereoscopic 3D gaming experiences. You can't compare the two. Now that said, Next week, we're going to start talking about modern stereoscopic 3D gaming on console and how it all got started with a little help of foot and mouth disease. See you next week.